lead Indonesia analyst at the strategic advisory firm Global Council. Thanks for joining us on TRT World. So the Thank price you, of a ticket on this train is certainly more than what most ordinary Indonesians would pay. It's up to $20. How big a factor is that going to be with regards to who will use this train? Uh, I think ticket price is uh, certainly a key barrier uh, for uh, most ordinary Indonesians to consider taking the high-speed train to travel between the Indonesian cities of uh, Jakarta and Bandung. Uh, the high-speed train is uh, currently the most expensive choice compared to other uh, transportation options, uh, such as normal trains, uh, shuttle buses, and cars. Uh, but I think the high-speed trains are remarkably shorter uh, travel time, approximately 35 to 45 minutes between Jakarta and Bandung, is likely to be particularly uh, appealing to uh, business travelers uh, who need to make quick uh, journeys between the two cities. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, tourists uh, may find this travel option attractive, uh, but traveling by car, uh, either personal or rental, from Jakarta remains a more affordable option, especially if you want to travel around the outskirts of uh, Bandung. And putting the, all of that into perspective, the cost of this train was $7 billion. It's a massive amount. It was over budget. Are there concerns this is not going to be profitable for the Indonesian government? Uh, yeah, uh, considering that the high-speed train uh, appears to primarily attract uh, only a specific demographic, uh, it raises uncertainty about uh, whether this substantial uh, infrastructure investment uh, will prove uh, profitable for uh, the government. I think the project has been funded with a mix of funds uh, from Chinese lenders and the national budget. Uh, so there is a concern uh, that such a huge investment uh, will affect public finance, which is already strained uh, by the pandemic. Uh, however, uh, I think the government has a different point of view uh, that the high speed train is not purely about uh, making profit, uh, but it is to serve the community with proper uh, public transportation. I think uh, it, it is a fair justification because uh, public transportation uh, rarely uh, makes money as uh, it, it, it hugely depends on the government's budget or subsidy in order to get it run. And Daddy, this is also all part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. What are other big projects we could soon see come to fruition under this project in Asia? I think this project, uh, which uh, spans seven years and received uh, approximately seven billion in funding, uh, is just one of several uh, significant uh, projects uh, supported by Chinese uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Um, I think the high-speed railway between Jakarta and Bandung stands as a success story, uh, showcasing how the BRI uh, has played a pivotal role in modernizing uh, Indonesia's transportation infrastructure. Uh, I think most of the big projects are already completed. Uh, including the construction of toll road networks uh, between Kuala Namu Airport and the city of Medan uh, in the Indonesian province of North Sumatra. There's also this uh, massive uh, reservoir in uh, Sumedang, uh, a region in the province of West Java. Uh, but I think the most important question now is whether the Indonesian government will uh, proceed with uh, extending the high-speed railways network to other uh, major cities on Java Island, uh, including Kertajati, Yogyakarta, Solo, and Surabaya. Uh, I think uh, from now on, the government will need to think carefully about this project, and the green light will depend on the result of the feasibility study that is expected to come up uh, two weeks from now. Uh, mm -hmm. If approved, uh, the funding for more likely coming again from China. Yeah, certainly a lot to take into consideration there. Dedi Donato, thanks so much for your time.